And now for some final thoughts on carbon. You might think of carbon as a kind of unpleasant little element. After all, it's the active ingredient in soot. It's also the stuff left over after you burn your toast. But it's actually quite distinguished among elements. Carbon has the highest melting point. Pure carbon can become graphite, one of the softest materials around, used every time you write with a pencil. Meanwhile, pure carbon, when exposed to heat, pressure, and a little bit of time, also makes diamond, one of the hardest materials around, used for the cutting tips of masonry saws and jackhammers. Perhaps you didn't know, but when light passes into a diamond, it slows down to only 40% of its speed in a vacuum. Oh, did I mention you can use diamonds to make jewelry? But carbon's greatest distinction of all is that it's the building block for the molecules of life. Carbon is remarkably fertile. You can make more molecules with carbon in them than you can with all other kinds of molecules combined. So we shouldn't be surprised that life, the most complex expression of chemistry we know, is based on carbon. And because carbon is the third most abundant chemically active ingredient in the universe, right after hydrogen and oxygen, we're given every reason to presume that yet-to-be-discovered life elsewhere in the cosmos would be based on carbon as well. So what would we do? Where would we be without carbon? Jewelry would be a lot less interesting, but that would be the least of our concerns, since life itself probably would not exist at all. And that is the cosmic perspective.